Hello and welcome to Finality's Fundamental Learning Series webinar. My name is David. Today we're going to be going over the very first fun uh, Fundamentals webinar in our series, which is setting up our main call menu. What is a call menu? The call menu, or sometimes referred to as a IVR, or an interactive voice response, is how you interact with the outside public to your phone system. Uh, basically allowing people the options of key presses or or different functions will route calls in different ways depending on how we set them up. When your finality system receives its initial call, it's going to first see if one of these numbers is a direct inward dial or a DID for one of your users. If it is, it'll route the call straight to that user's phone. Otherwise, if it's an unassigned phone number on your system, basically a valid number that is not set up as a direct inward dial for a user, it's going to go through this main call sequence, or our IVR. One of the first things that we should do as a, as a business starting up here with Finality is think about how you want your IVR configured per your business. Uh, IVRs can be extremely flexible and it could also be extremely rigid. It really depends on you. I would say the flexible side is more where the call routes straight to a uh, administrative assistant or some sort of an inbound operator. That operator can answer the call and vet it out and you know transfer the call any number of ways and set it up that way. A more rigid system is you know where you call in and a voice prompt plays. You will it it'll it will detail the options to the customer. Press 1 to go to sales, press 2 to go to support, press 3 to go to, you know, marketing, and then press 9 to go to the name directory, press 0 to go to an operator. The options are truly yours and extre extremely configurable. So one of the first things you got to do as an administrator is log in, look at this auto answer, edit call menu tab from your control panel, and really think about how you want your customers to interact with your Finality phone system. In the bottom left hand corner of that page you're going to see the add a new sequence section. This is where you will add any number of steps to add that functionality to your main call sequence. The call sequence has many many options um, based on exactly how you want to handle that traffic. S you know, Send a caller to a voicemail box, forward it to an external number, ring the extensions inside of a queue, play your own custom music on hold while the while the call is holding, or modify the incoming caller ID. So instead of it saying the original caller ID, it, it will say, you know, support or sales. That way you know what kind of a call you're getting into. One of the first things I did for this example was to take my company, ABC Sales, and think about how I wanted to handle all of the traffic coming into my actual phone system. Kind of broke down like this. I wanted it to answer the call initially, then as long as it's during my schedule of my work hours of Monday through Friday 8 to 5 p.m., I want it to go ahead forward and play a message to my users describing how to navigate my phone system. Then I was going to give them three seconds, which will, which is a pause to allow them to put in a key press. I'm going to go ahead and play that message one more time, just in case we miss something. And then I'm going to wait three seconds again. again. Lastly, if no action is taken at that point, I want them to just forward straight to the voicemail box of my assistant. On the other hand, if I am closed and it is not Monday through Friday 8 to 5 p.m., I'm just going to go ahead and forward that call straight to my uh, assistant's voicemail. That way, he or she can get it in the morning and appropriately vet out that call to the appropriate party, and we can get back to that person as soon as possible. Let's go ahead and start the actual configuration of this setup. So under the Auto Answer tab in your, in your CP, you'll see that there is the Edit Call Menu, but there's also Scheduler. Under Scheduler, I'm going to create that schedule of Monday through Friday, 8 to 5 p.m. It's going to look something like this. I typically call it Business Hours, um, Date Range, Monday through Friday, Time Range, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
And don't worry, this is going to respect the time zone that you have set on your server. So if you're in Eastern Time, it'll be in EST. If you're on Pacific Time, it'll be in Pacific Standard Time. So you have to take that into account when you start to think about the times that you choose for these hours. Now we need to create a sub-menu. So we've got our business hours and we need to route these calls to our open hours sub-menu so that we can set up our voice prompts and our, and our, our delays and for the customer when they call in while we're open. So I'm going to make a new sub-menu under uh, Auto Answer Submenus. I'm going to create one called Business Hours. So there's my there's my schedule right there now that it's made. I can click the hourglass over here or the magnifying glass off to the right to go ahead and open up the submenu uh, that I just created and start to add some sequences to it. So now the default entry is that the only thing that will be there is it sets the caller ID to the original caller ID. I'm going to go ahead and keep that intact. I'm not going to change that today. Next step is we're going to go ahead and start to add some steps into our call sequence. So I'm going to go ahead and add after step one, I'm going to play a voice prompt and allow key presses. Note there's also one that disallows key presses. That's just if you want to play an informational message. My finalized setup will look something like this. It'll say set the incoming caller ID. I'm just going to maintain the original caller ID number. I'm going to play my Welcome to ABC Sales voice prompt, which I recorded under Auto Answer Voice Prompts. I'm going to wait three seconds and listen for a key press. And then after step three, I added a step for step four to replay the Welcome to ABC uh, voice prompt while listening for key presses. I added one more delay where we wait for three seconds to listen to for an appropriate key press. Otherwise, if none of those conditions are met and we make it all the way to step six, that call is then going to go straight to the voicemail box of my assistant, which in my case is 7040, is their extension number. So that pretty much sets it up for our business hours. Now at our main call menu, we have, you know, it, there are some default steps. I deleted them. Um, that way, the only two options that I have on my on my call sequence right now under main, which is your main call sequence, is to answer and hang up the call. So now I'm going to add a step to go ahead and respect my business schedule. And if if it meets my business hours, I'm going to route that call to my new business hours submenu. So after step one, I added the sequence of go to business hours during business hours. Note how it says go to this submenu based on this schedule. So the finalized one will look just like this. Currently, you got to be careful because if I called this, this server right now with just these three steps and it was not Monday through Friday, eight to five, it's going to answer the call and then computers use logic of true or false. So it's going to get to step two and it says go to business hours during business hours. Well, that would be false if it was outside of business hours. What's left? It's, it's literally going to hang up on the call. It will say goodbye and hang up on the call. So you always want to add a fail safe step. And, and by that, I mean, you want to, you want to make sure that you're not just terminating calls on people. So note, note that after step two, I added a step for go to voicemail box 7040, which was my assistant. So I've got answer the call menu, or I'm sorry, answer the incoming call, go to business hours during the business hours sub or business hour schedule. Then I've got go to voicemail box 7040. That way, if, if condition two is not met and that becomes a false, at least the user will be able to leave a voicemail for my assistant and then we could vet that call out that way. So once again, it's an if else statement. So you got to be sure that you follow trues and falses. It's a computer, right? So it's just going to look at it and it's going to say, is this true or false? 
Is this true or false? And it's going to go down the sequence as, as if that were the matter. Success. So now we've got our new call sequence. You know, we've got answer the call. During our scheduled business hours of 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, we're going to play our, our message, which will detail how we want to navigate users through our system. We're going to wait three seconds. We're going to play that message again in case they missed it. We're going to wait three more seconds. And then we're going to send them to the voicemail box of our assistant. Once again, if it's not Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, then they will go straight to the voicemail box of our assistant. And then that way we can vet out the calls internally. I hope that you enjoyed and I hope that this is helpful. I'm going to go ahead and publish this with a link to our Zendesk, our Finality Zendesk knowledge base so that you can review it at any time. Also feel free to use the comments section to post questions or comments, concerns, anything like that. Myself or one of my senior technicians will be monitoring it, almost treating it as a forum. So please do feel free to post your ideas there and uh, we hope to see you next week for our how do I configure our IP phone or basic IP phone troubleshooting webinar? Thank you and have a wonderful day.